Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, I'm excited and nervous to share this. Um, just, just the way that I want it to, to come across. And I've just been praying that God will help me and give me the, the what I need <laughs> for today. Um, I want to pray again, um, if we can, just close our eyes. Father God, we just thank you and we praise your name, Lord, for who you are. For Father, thank you because you see us with love. You see us, Father you see our potential father god you see father so much more than we can see with our physical eyes father god and father we just praise you because you don't want us to um, conform or to be happy the way we are but you want us to continue pursuing you father god and i just pray that your word would be released this morning father we pray against any word any thought that is not from you jesus Father, and we declare that your Holy Spirit will bring fire and joy to our lives today, Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, so yeah, I was asked to continue the series of Galatians, and um, I had something in mind, a verse in mind, but then I realized Neil was preaching on the first chapter um, two weeks ago, and I was like, oh man, I really felt like I had to um, just base my, my, my word on this verse, and um, I talked to Aaron and then to Neil, and then I realized that he actually skipped that verse, so I was happy and felt like, yeah, that was God saying, yes, that's, that's the word you have to say today. Um, it's Galatians 1.10, um, if you want to read it with me, it says, I am now, am I, sorry, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God, or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. And these words have come to me in a few different ways um, in the last few weeks. And I feel like God has been challenging me personally in this word. Um, and I wanna, I, I was just praying, asking God, God, what, what else do I, how do I make this a sermon or a word, um, whatever you wanna call it. And I just felt like God, simply just said share your testimony and how this area of your life has been impacted by God um I want to go back to a few years ago um maybe more than a few years ago um whenever I, I was a young girl I grew up in a big family one of seven I'm number six um a pastor my, my parents pastor a church in Panama City and in Panama, main religion would be Catholicism, and Christians are, it's quite popular, if you want to call it, it's quite a, a big, well-known religion. Um, but being a Christian wasn't always a cool thing, wasn't always the, the fun thing to be. Um, the first few years of primary school, I went to Christian school, but then in high school, I went to uh, normal school. It wasn't Catholic, it wasn't anything, and I found it very tricky at that age, being a teenager, um, 13 to 16 years old. Um, I, I believed in God, I trusted God, but I was having a really hard time as, as you do whenever you're a teenager, um, trying to please my friends, trying to please God, trying to please my parents. I, um, I'm one of the youngest and I've always been um, a rule follower kind of thing. <laughs> I, I don't like to, 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 to my, for my parents to disapprove of the things that I was doing. And I might have like hit, of course I did, Bad things but I might have tried really hard to hide those things and you know um, but I was always that fear of knowing that God was with me God was watching me um, and not like oh my goodness yeah the fear of God um, I felt like was always in my heart knowing that yeah my parents might not see me right now but God was with me all the time so it was always like this struggle to to be a Christian in church and then in school um, to be cool or to be accepted by my friends. Um, so I wrestled with this feeling for, for a few years. Um, and maybe whenever I turned 17 years old, um, I, I really just kind of knew what I, what I was missing, what my life was missing. I mean, I was still a Christian, but 
I really started going after him, his heart. And I fell in love in a way that I'm still looking back and I'm like, wow. Um, not, not, nothing to do to praise myself, but to see the fire that was in me. Um, at 17 years old, um, of course, a lot of things influenced me. We had a, a great youth pastor who was on fire for missions and for God, and he would take in us to different places. And, and that heart started growing, and that passion for God started growing. And one of my best friends, um, she wasn't a Christian girl, and she, her parents were going through a divorce, and she would have just talked to me quite a bit. And I mean, we're only 16, 17 years old, and she's telling me all the things, and I'm like, okay, you know, the only thing I knew what to say to her was, I'm gonna pray for you, and, and I'm praying for you, and my mom is praying for you, and um, she kept coming back to tell, opening her heart and telling me all the things, and, um, I remember one day I got, you know, just that courage to just share the gospels with her and say, look, this is what you need. You need God. And, and right away, she just kind of says that I, I don't, I don't really want to hear of your religion. You know, we are, we're best friends, but I don't really care about what you have to say. And let's just, you know, you with your religion and me with my religion, let's just leave it at that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's, that's fine. And, um, but I continue, I said, okay, but I'm gonna keep praying for you. And um, that was okay with her. And then we um, eventually, you know, we kept, I kept praying for her. And then she started asking me, can you pray for this? And can you pray for that? And um, I was trying so hard to show God's love. Um, I could have probably been really upset at her and being like, okay, well, we're not friends anymore and all the rest, but I just, felt like, yeah, just show God's love to her and this is what she needs right now. And and I did, that, that's what I did. I, I kept showing God's love to her and I invited her to church one day, knowing that she was gonna say yes or thinking that she was say, gonna say yeah, no, sorry. And she did say yes. She she came in with church, to church with me. Um, she started going to, to church with me. But, and, and that was amazing. Like I was so, so, so amazed by God's faithfulness and to see her becoming a Christian and giving her life to God. Um, another one of our friends, he also gave his life to the Lord. And and to see back to that young girl that was so on fire for God, that was not embarrassed, that didn't care anymore about fitting in, that didn't care anymore about being cool or being, um, yeah, being in. Um, I remember, many times sharing in taxis and bosses, people beside me, just that fire for God and being like, you know what? I know what God has called me to do and I wanna do it with all I can. I wanna share it. I don't wanna, you know, I don't want anything to hold me back. 18, 17 years old. And um, as, as I turn an adult, now and I, I feel like on and off I've struggled with pleasing man and trying to be again that girl that full of passion full of love for God and I feel like we find ourselves so often in that position of of being in of following trends of 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 knowing and wanting um, some of the world but also wanting to please God also wanting to be servants of God and yeah, that's something that I feel like God is, is, is telling me um, this last few weeks, even I have experienced just that, you know, tiredness and, and it's been hard to, to do all the things that you're doing, to do all the things that, that you know that keep you in track with God. But again, is it my heart to please man or to please God? Um, and yeah, sorry. <laughs> A few a few weeks months ago year almost a year ago um, I felt like God was asking me to do something um, just before the pandemic started and again there was this uh, this heart of God I want to follow you what you have for me I want to do what you want me to do but this is so out there and so it puts me in in the light that I don't want to be right now and I struggle with this thought of God is it you is it you telling me to do this 
and of course I knew that was God um, but because he he tells us to do things that we already know that he's anointed us he's given us different gifts and talents and um, a few years ago we I had the opportunity to preach in the church we were going to and then the pandemic happened but I felt like God kept giving me words and 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 words and I'm like okay so who am I meant to share this with you know we can't even see anybody right now and all the rest um but I felt like God was saying you know I want you to make videos and and share them out in your Facebook or Instagram and and at the beginning I was like no I just sounds so cringy so <laughs> so uh, no why why would I do this and I was just wrestling with God um but eventually I just I share it with Simon and he was like, yeah, that's a good idea. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be the one doing it. <laughs> Somebody else can do it, but I don't want to be the one doing it. Um, because of the fear again of what will people say? What will my friends say? Um, what if nobody sees it? And then it just came to a point. It's like, God, I don't care. I don't want to care. I, of course I do care, <laughs> but I don't want to care. I don't want to care what people think. If you have called me to do something, I want to say yes. Amen. I want to do it. And I feel like that's the heart that God wants to give us today. A heart that says, you know what? I am tired of following whatever thing I feel like I'm following. I want, I want to have a heart, a passion for God that our hearts will return to that first love, that our hearts will return to that person, that girl, that guy, that was just so on fire. I feel like that's that's who God wants us to be today. That's what our generation, our friends, our neighbors need. That passion, that fire for God, that will not be quiet, that will not get embarrassed. Because what if they don't like it? Well, who cares if they don't like it or not? Yes. I'd rather please God than please man. Yes. Yes. I'd rather be great in the eyes of God than be great in the eyes of men. Yes. And I feel like that's the heart that God wants to give us today. We live, we live in a culture that even in church, I feel like that being pl people pleaser has filtered in so easily. We're trying to please people more than God and this is not just for our church it's for the church in general because we might be afraid of what people think or people leaving the ministry or people criticizing our ministry we are worried of what people would say in Romans 12 1 and 2 and, and if you're gonna listen to anything listen to this verse in the verse and, and the message translation Romans 12 1 and 2 says so here's what I want you to do, God helping you, take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering, embracing what God does for you in the best, is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't be don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. And wow, that whenever I read that, I just broke down because it's so many times that I have tried to fit in, to, to just be one that, you know, doesn't really, just one that fits in, that it's like the rest. Instead, Fix your eyes, your attentions on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. And I feel like that's God's heart right now for us. To respond to his calling, to respond to the calling that maybe he gave you a few years ago, maybe last month, last week, whatever time. But to return to that first love to that first moment where we felt so on fire for him unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity god brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you yes. <clears throat> do we want to be servants of christ of all the world 
and we can spend our lives, and I was just thinking this, you know, we can spend our lives trying to please men, trying to be seen good by men, trying to be seen or, or get men's praise. But we will, you know, if we get one person's praise, you know, we might get 10 people's disapproval. So we can be searching for this praise and this approval that we will never get from men, right? And I feel like sometimes we are so invested, we can be so invested in this, even as Christians. Neil said something in his, in his preaching, in this word, um, let's not be that church that gets off track. And I feel like that's the calling for us. <coughs> let's not get off track and lose our sight of, of what's our goal. Our goal is heaven as Christians. Our goal is to share his word in earth. Let's not be trend followers. And this is something that I was talking to my son. Let's not be trend followers. Not because he was doing it, but we were just having an argument about it, a discussion about it. Um, it's so easy to want to follow yeah. a trend. Yeah. But it could take us away from what God wants. And I'm not saying by this that, you know, I, I love trends. I love fashion. I love different things. But... If this is taking our eyes from God, if this is becoming the number one thing that I'm trying to pursue, that I'm trying to serve, that's, that's not okay. Of course it's not. That's taking God's place in our hearts, in our lives. If we choose God, and we know this, but at times I feel like, you know, we, we may forget that if we choose God, our reward in heaven, and even on earth, because he says so, will be so much greater than if we are trying to follow what, what's in, what's yeah. out there. In Matthew 5, 10, and 16, it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, mm -hmm. for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven yes. for in the same way that they persecute persecuted the prophets who were before you you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trample on their feet. You are the light of the world. If you can say that with me, you are the light of the world. And that's each one of us. That's what he's called us to be, the light of this world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people <coughs> light a, a lamp. Sorry, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light be shine before others and they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We know what we're called for, each and one of us. That doesn't exclude anybody. We are called to be the salt, to be the light, and we can't hide that. I feel like the enemy is constantly trying to to make us, you know, just I just want to not not be seen by anybody, you know. But that's that's not what God has called you to do. He's called you to be out there, different, crazy. Who cares? I'd rather be crazy than be sane and be like the rest. And I know that's that's, that's our heart. I know that's our heart as church to be the salt of this earth. Yeah. We are called to be the light in the midst of the darkness. We live in a dark world and a world full of disappointments and and we have the answer. We have what so many around us need. I want to finish off by reading Matthew 28, and I want to read 
two versions of it. Whenever Jesus went back to heaven, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of age. I just feel like God is reminding us of that calling. Going back to that first love, where nothing else matters. I want to pray right now before I finish reading the other one. And if this is your prayer as well, I just want you to have that attitude of worship, of agreement. Father God, we just come before you, Jesus. We ask forgiveness, Lord, if we have let the culture of this world dragged us down, Father. If we have let, Father, just the influence of the world turn our eyes away from you, Jesus. Set a fire in our hearts yes. yeah. that we cannot contain. Father God, we pray for those signs and wonders, Father God, that will follow us whenever we start doing what you want us to do, yeah. which is sharing the Gospels, which is telling others about you, Lord Jesus. You are not a liar. Right. Your word is truth. Yes. I pray right now, Father God, for your word to become real in our hearts. I pray that your word will jump out life into our lives right now, Jesus. We don't want to be following trends. We want to follow you, Jesus. We want to be your servants, Lord. And like Paul said, Father God, we are your servants, Lord. And we are not people pleasers, Lord. Help us understand your calling right now, Father God. Help us be aware of of what this world needs, Lord Jesus. Help us be that salt. Help us be that light, Lord Jesus. I pray against any spirit of intimidation or any spirit, Father, of of fear of men, Lord, because that's not from you, Jesus. I pray for boldness over my brothers and sisters. I pray for boldness over my brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus. I pray that this week, whenever we are having our time with you, you will reveal yourself in a way that we have never experienced before. Jesus, I thank you for each and one of my brothers and sisters that are here. Father, I pray for passion right now, Jesus, right now. Amen. Um, the other verse that I wanted to read is the same um, whenever Jesus was going into heaven but it says something that um, Aaron was talking about he said to them go into the world and preach the gospels to all creations whoever believes and is baptized will, will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned and this signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will drive out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands in sick people and they will get well and this is a promise that god has given us jesus has given us whenever he went to heaven and he is desiring hearts they're willing to say yes to his calling, whatever that may be. So, 